Hello and welcome to a free RTOS on the RP2040 tutorial, where today we will be covering mutexes. Previously, we have covered how to set up the free RTOS kernel on the RP2040, looked into thread management and inter-thread communication, as well as task scheduling and priorities. If you haven't seen these parts yet, then I would advise you to watch them first, as this tutorial builds on those concepts. I will leave the playlist link down in the description. In this video we are going to cover what a mutex is, why it is important, how to use one, and finally we will end with an example for you to try out. Ok, so let's get started. What is a mutex? The word mutex is a shortening of mutual exclusion, and a mutex is a type of binary semaphore that includes a priority inheritance mechanism. Don't worry about what a semaphore is just yet, we'll cover that in the next part, part 5 of this tutorial series. Just understand that the mutex can have a value of a 0 or a 1. A mutex acts as a token that is used to guard a resource. Another analogy could be a lock and key. Say there is only one key that unlocks this lock and that all tasks have access to this key, but only one can use it at a time. Say for example we have two tasks and they both want to use the guarded or locked resource. So task A looks for the key, or the mutex, sees that it is available, and then takes it. This sets the mutex value to zero. Task A is out now able to unlock and use the guarded resource. Once it finishes, it returns the key, meaning that the mutex value is set to one. Hopefully you can see that in this analogy, that whilst task 1 holds the mutex or key, the other task cannot take the key and so cannot access the shared resource. So maybe you can see why using a mutex is helpful, but hopefully this will help clear things up. You might recall in our video on scheduling we mentioned the concept of context switching. This is when the free RTOS scheduler suspends a task and allows another task to run. During this switch, whatever the task was doing is halted and then resumed once that task is resumed. However, context switching can really mess things up if it occurs in the middle of using a shared resource. Imagine that two tasks are using a global variable as some kind of flag or counter. Each task reads the variable, does something to it, like increment it or otherwise modify it, then writes this modified value or variable back to memory. This process takes a few processor cycles to perform, this sequence of operations. It, the process isn't atomic. And this means that the kernel, or the free RTOS kernel, might interrupt the task during this cycle um, during a context switch. And another task might modify the global variable before the previously interrupted task could finish. This can lead to things like data loss, missed signaling if the global variable was a flag, and a whole host of other headache inducing problems. A mutex is a simple and effective solution to this problem. However, there are some situations where mutexes shouldn't be used. Mutexes shouldn't be used from an interrupt because of their priority inheritance mechanism. The priority inheritance mechanism means that if a high priority task blocks or waits while attempting to obtain a mutex that is currently held by a lower priority task, this is called priority inversion, as a higher priority task is waiting for a lower priority task to finish. And to help solve this priority inversion, um, the priority of the task holding the mutex, so the lower priority one, is temporarily raised to that of the task that is being blocked. This mechanism is designed to ensure that the higher priority task is kept in the block state for the shortest time possible, and to minimize the priority inversion that has just occurred. Hopefully you can see why this might be a bit of a problem if mutexes are used within interrupts. Also, an interrupt cannot block to wait for the mutex of a guarded resource to become available. There are a couple of uh, free RTOS API functions that we need to use uh, in order to create and use a mutex. The x semaphore create mutex API function is used to create the mutex. Then we have x semaphore take that we use to try and take the mutex. And this has the arguments of the, the mutex name and the delay for which the uh, for which to block if the mutex isn't immediately available. Setting this to zero means that the task will not wait. It will just see that the, the mutex isn't available and go on with something else. Then we have x semaphore give, which takes the name of the mutex, 
to give back once the task is finished with the guarded resource. OK, so now we are ready to implement a mutex in our own programs. We're going to create a program that will print a bunch of characters to the screen. We're going to imagine that the values printed over USB serial are what is written to a variable, and we're going to see how the mutex affects them. I realise that this is not a perfect analogy, but it should visually show you how mutexes work and can help. We are going to start from our free RTOS on the RP2040 project template. You can download this from GitHub if you haven't used it already. I will link it down in the description. Firstly, we need to make a couple of edits to the free RTOS config.h file. We need to enable mutexes by changing the 0 next to config use mutexes to a 1. Also, make sure that time slicing is enabled if it isn't already. Then, I'm going to increase the tick rate to 100,000 Hz from 100, and this just increases the rate at which the tasks switch between each other. And this will give us a better idea of how tasks can interrupt one another. You can now save the free RTOS config.h file. We also need to edit our cmakelists.txt file, the one in the same folder as our main.c file. We just add the following lines to enable output over USB serial. We can then save and close the cmakelists file. All the code written will be available in our website and I'll link that down below. Firstly, we're going to write the code without any mutexes and see how that works. So, a worst case scenario, if you will. I'm going to edit the task in the main.c file by creating a character of 1 to indicate that task 1 is currently running. I'm then just going to create a for loop which will print the character a total of 9 times. Outside of this for loop, I'm just going to print a new line. You could put a delay in here if you wanted to slow down the output of the program. Then, I'm going to copy this task and just change the printed character and rename both tasks to task1 and task2 respectively. In our main function, I make sure that we create the second task and change the namings around just to match the changes I've just made. Now once this is built and uploaded to an RP2040 board, we can open a serial monitor, I use putty, and we see this garbled mess of an output. This is a screen grab as I didn't put any delays in it and it was just whizzing past. We can quite clearly see each task is tripping over each other trying to achieve the same thing and creating this mess. This is not ideal, and hopefully you can imagine that if this was a variable written to, to memory, well it wouldn't be exactly what you wanted. So now let's implement some mutexes. Firstly, we need to include the semaphore header file, and this is spelt semphr.h. Then we create a static semaphore handle and call it mutex. Then in our main function, we set the mutex variable we just created to the function x semaphore create mutex. Finally, we need to implement the giving and taking of the mutex. In the task's infinite while loops, I'm going to create an if statement that tries to take the mutex without any delay. If the value of this take function is equal to pd true, then that means the semaphore is available. Then, after we've printed what we want to print to the uh, USB output, we need to give the mutex back with the x semaphore give function. Then, I simply copied and pasted this code into the other task, and then built and uploaded to the RP2040, and we get this output. It is now very clear that the output is not being interrupted. You can see uh, that task 1 and task 2 are running in blocks, and this could quite simply be cleared up with some task yielding or blocking if you wanted them to run sequentially. Maybe that's a challenge for you. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this Learn Embedded Systems tutorial where we covered what the mutex is, why you would want to use one, why you might not want to use one, and how to implement mutexes in your code. If you have any questions or comments, then please leave them down in the comment section below. If this video has helped you, then please consider subscribing. Thank you very much, and as always, have a nice day.